Today's topic is going to be our first real discussion of crystal symmetry. In the textbook, this material starts on page 114, and it goes for quite a while, but today, here on this lecture at least, we're only going to go up to about page 118. Now, for many years, people have been working to objectively understand human beauty. So here is an image you probably weren't expecting me to insert. But scientifically, what is our perception of beauty? Well, it comes down to symmetry um, of the human face and other things. In fact, Aristotle once said, the chief forms of beauty are order, symmetry, and definiteness. And we scientists have been trying to work this out. And in one study, Brad Pitt came as the most beautiful face. He scored a 9.6 out of 10 with Ryan Gosling, the second best man, with a score of 7.3. But enough objectifying celebrities, let's move on to beauty in minerals. And in fact, we could, this is a much more appropriate image to consider this topic, where we can see um, crystal blocks of beautiful mineral specimens, or real life in terms here with uh, pyrite, and here with garnet, and part of their aesthetic beauty has to do with the symmetry of their cubic form or their dodecahedral form shown in these pictures. So with the notes today, all right, so our heading is going to be crystal symmetry. Roman numeral one that you'll just track along with me is going to be types of symmetry. Types of symmetry. And this is going to build on our earlier lectures where there's these two main types. The first is internal. And the second type is going to be, of course, external. And internal symmetry, if I were to ask you what it is, well, then you're probably thinking about things with the unit cell, and that's exactly right. So we're going to define the internal symmetry as the atomic arrangement of the unit cell, that's an of, unit cell on lattice. Uh -huh. And our external symmetry, this is the crystal faces and really intersections thereof, the crystal faces and their intersection um, outwardly expressing outwardly expressing the internal symmetry. Internal symmetry. So we use the arrangement of the bounding faces, like here on pyrite, to describe this external symmetry. And we do it with a series of symmetry elements. And so Roman numeral two is going to be our symmetry elements. We're gonna go through three of them today. Symmetry elements. Okay, the first type of symmetry element is called a rotation. Rotation, and it is as simple as it sounds. Basically, you rotate a motif, that's what we're going to write down, and the motif is nothing more than a crystal face. So we rotate a motif, if you want to write crystal face there you can, about an axis um, in the crystal center, or that goes through a crystal center. That goes through crystal center. We say, like when we're, when we're talking about this, we use the phrase an n-fold axis of rotation, where an n is any number. So we say n-fold axis of rotation, where the n is equal like to be, well it's not a 1 to be honest, it's a 2, a 3, a 4, or a 6. The reason why is one fold axis of rotation, well that's useless, right? Because it just means that you go 360 degrees and of course something looks the same, right? So a one fold, let's say that one fold is useless, in my opinion, I hope I'm not being blasphemous, and a five fold is impossible because it ends up not encapsulating space. So we don't see 
five folds. We also don't see seven folds, and anything with higher number, an eight fold, a nine fold, etc., can all be described by the smallest denominator. So a five fold and a seven fold, these are impossible and we don't use them. So how do how does this actually work? Let's just go through the different examples. Number one, so we'll just say this is a two-fold axis of rotation. Come on, pen, rotation. And what this means is that you have to rotate an object 180 degrees to repeat that face. To repeat. So let's say here, what do we have? We're, we do the comma, right? So we have our comma. You rotate it 180 degrees in order to see that comma again. And then we draw it. Ooh, does the tail go up or does the tail go down? That's the question here. Well, the tail, if the tail is in here, the tail also has to be in here. Because the fold, when you do a fold axis of rotation, it's called same-handedness. We need to behave same-handedness. It's like if you took your hand in front of your face, I'm actually doing this right now at my desk, and I'm like, pointing my palm out towards you, and I rotate my hand 180 degrees, notice what my thumb does, right? The thumb stays to the inside, just like the tail of the comma does. Now, our shorthand for a, if we were to see a two-fold axis of rotation, we don't want to write two-fold axis of rotation out each time. We could just give it the symbol A2. Okay, now let's go through the rest of them here. We'll do this fairly quickly. So uh, number two, this is our three-fold axis of rotation. To do that, you rotate 120 degrees to get the same feature to repeat. And the shorthand symbology is a three. Four is our four-fold axis of rotation. We need 90 degrees to get that thing to repeat. And our shorthand, you guessed it, is a four. And then that's one, two. Okay. Messy, messy, messy. One, two, three. You probably caught that, didn't you? It's not the last mistake I'll make. And then we have our six-fold axis of rotation. We need 60 degrees rot change until you get repeat, and the symbol here is an A6. Now, the textbook has a great figure that shows this. Um, here it is for you. Okay, and basically you can see what I've done. This is and I could have probably made you draw this each time, but it shows how a comma would behave on each of the different axes of rotation. Uh, let's do one more image here we, before we move on. We've got space for it. If I shrink it just right. Here's two real-life examples in three dimensions of spinel crystals from oh, Thailand, I believe. My, no, 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 Myanmar. This is a country used to be called Burma. So what are the different axes of rotations here? Well, this one actually is probably easiest to see. We would draw our axis down the center of the crystal. We pick our motif right here. How many degrees do we have to rotate to see another similar feature? Well, that's 120 degrees. Well, that's a triangle. So this is our A3. Let's do this example. We put our axis of rotation down the center of the crystal. It's kind of going down into the page. We pick our motif. How far do we have to rotate to get it to repeat? Well, it actually is here, right? See how long this face is? And this face is shorter. So this one, you have to rotate 180 degrees to get the repeat. And here we see a good example of an A2. That is how rotations work. So now let's move on. I better go back to my black ink. We're going to go to the next symmetry element. It's simpler even than a rotation, and this is called a reflection. Also known as, aka, a mirror plane. And our definition for a mirror plane is this two-dimensional, it's an imaginary plane. We don't actually see it, we just visualize it in our mind's eye. It's an imaginary plane that divides a crystal, a crystal, in two halves. So if we were to draw this, well, here is our mirror plane, let's say. And we have our comma, our trusty comma, 
Oh boy, that just looks like a, what does that look like? Let's make it a musical note. What would a mirror plan look like of this? Oh, well, here's the bass. Here, da, da. Now what's really important about this mirror plane is that you get a opposite handedness, right? Like if you were to hold your hand up in front of your face, your left hand, and then you hold up your right hand in front of your face, your thumbs are pointing to each other, just like these symbols on the top of my musical notes. Are those real musical notes? I don't know. I'm not as musical as you might have expected me to be. Our symbology for a mirror plane is an M. Let's see if I have an example here from the textbook. Uh, not so much. It's just they provide this comma example that we just drew. Maybe that makes it a little more clear for you. I'll put it over here on the side. Um, what else can we do here? Yeah, let's look at some real-life mineral examples. That would be valuable. Here is a zircon crystal shown in thin section, where a thin section is a very small slice, or a very thin slice, maybe 30 microns thick, through um, a rock. And so we see these. this example of a zircon crystal. Do we see a mirror plane? Yeah, we actually see more than one. We see one mirror plane that shoots through like this. Uh-huh. So we could label that as a mirror. And then, I mean, there is some imperfection here because it's a natural crystal, but then we'd also see that there's another mirror plane here. So crystals tend to have multiple mirror planes. Now in a more three-dimensional example right here, do we see mirror planes? You bet we do. There's a mirror plane that comes kind of through it horizontally like so. And there's another mirror plane that cuts through it vertically like this. So we have two mirror planes in both of these examples. Now there's one last type of symmetry element I want to talk about today. It's called a glide plane. It's a little more complicated. It's, well, it's kind of like a complicated mirror. So let's go glide plane. And this is a mirror with a translation. In fact, I can probably show it best with just a picture from the textbook first. These feet are walking and they are walking about a, a glide plane where we have them mirroring across but then translating up. So that's what a glide plane is. It's a combination of reflection, combination of reflection and translation where translation just means movement in a direction, okay? So translation is just movement in a direction. We don't use glide planes very often in three-dimensional crystallography at our level, but we do do it in two dimensions when we see, when we're working on like a, a two-dimensional lattice. In this case, the translation is equal to one half the distance between the feet on the same side. If you want to draw this example of feet as a demonstration of glide plane, please be my guest. And then now to finish, what I want to do is I just want to draw a simple shape with you in three dimensions, and we're going to identify symmetry elements. And the shape we're going to draw, and please do this as carefully as you can. I'm going to try to do it carefully on the screen here, but my penmanship lacks from time to time. It's going to be a rectangle in three dimensions. There's the front of our rectangle. Here's it going back into 3D. Okay, just take your time with it. You can always pause the video if I'm rushing you, bad drawers. So there is our shape. And we have some rotation axes here and some mirror planes. And let's start with our rotation. So if we were to say that there was a rotation axis right here, could we rotate this block around and get this face to be repeated? Well, sure we can when the box, when the back of the serial box get repeated. So this axis here is a two-fold axis of rotation with 180 degrees and A2. We could do the same thing here. If our axis of rotation came out of the page like this, we could rotate our box right in a circle about that axis, and we would get a repeat every 180 degrees with an A2. And similarly here, we could put an axis here, and if we were to rotate in this direction every 180 degrees, we would see that there is another A2. So this rectangle has three A2s, but what about mirror planes? It absolutely does have mirror planes. Let me show you one. Here we go. We dash in a line here. 
and this side of the box reflects about this side of the box, about this mirror plane, and so we have right here 1m. Can we find more? Sure we can. There's three of them. There's another mirror plane. And where's the last one? The last one's right here. It comes down the middle there. So, right? so it's splitting the crystal into two halves, and in three dimensions we find three mirror planes. If that went a little too fast, pause it, take your time with it. But this is the sort of thing we're going to do for the next few weeks.